Russian President Vladimir Putin held bilateral talks with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the sidelines of the BRICS summit in Kazan on Tuesday. The two leaders discussed bilateral relations and the conflict in Ukraine. We believe that problems should be resolved peacefully, and we fully support the quickest establishment of peace and stability, Modi said at the beginning of the meeting. And we are ready to provide any possible assistance in the future, he added. The BRICS bloc of developing economies that initially comprised Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa has expanded rapidly to embrace Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. Turkey, Azerbaijan and Malaysia have formally applied to become members, and a few others have expressed an interest in joining. Observers see the BRICS summit as part of the Kremlin's efforts to showcase support from the global south amid spiraling tensions with the West and help expand economic and financial ties. Putin is set to hold about 20 bilateral meetings on the sidelines of the summit, including Tuesday's encounters with China's President Xi Jinping and South African President Cyril Ramaphosa. On Thursday, Putin is also set to meet with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who will be making his first visit to Russia in more than two years. Guterres has repeatedly criticized Russia's action in Ukraine. Российско-индийские отношения носят характер особо привилегированного стратегического партнерства и продолжают активно развиваться. Укрепляется взаимодействие по линии законодательных органов. Наши министры иностранных дел в постоянном контакте находятся. В хорошем состоянии находится товарооборот. Мы приветствуем ваше решение открыть в Казани генеральное консульство Индии. Расширение дипломатического присутствия Индии в России будет способствовать дальнейшему развитию двухсторонних отношений. Ваше превосходительство, вы успешно руководите объединением БРИКС. Экселенции, Рус и Украина в связи с Сангарской вещью, мы лагатарь сампарк мы работаем. Как я уже сказал, мы считаем, что проблемы с проблемами должны быть сантипурным образом. Санти и стилта, что жаль с жаль, बहाली का हम पूरी तरह समर्थन करते हैं हमारे सभी प्रयास मानवता को प्रमुखता देते हैं आने वाले समय में भी भारत हर संभव सहयोग देने के लिए तैयार है एक्सेलेंसी आज इन सभी विषयों पर विचार साझा करने का एक और महत्वपूर्ण अवसर है एक बार फिर बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ईश्वर in the coming days, Russian President Vladimir Putin will be shaking hands with multiple world leaders, including China's Xi Jinping, India's Narendra Modi, Turkey's Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Iran's Masoud Pazeshkian. They will all be in the Russian city of Kazan on Tuesday for a meeting of the BRICS bloc of developing economies, defying predictions that the war in Ukraine and an international arrest warrant against Putin would turn him into a pariah. The alliance, which aims to counterbalance the Western-led world order, initially included Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, but started to rapidly expand this year. Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia joined in January, Turkey, Azerbaijan and Malaysia formally applied, and a number of others expressed a desire to be members. 
Russian officials already see it as a massive success. Putin's foreign policy aide Yuri Ushakov said 32 countries confirmed participation, and 24 will send heads of state. Putin will hold around 20 bilateral meetings, Ushakov said, and the summit could turn into the largest foreign policy event ever held on Russian soil. Analysts say the Kremlin wants both the optics of standing shoulder to shoulder with its global allies amid continued tensions with the West, as well as the practicality of negotiating deals with them to shore up Russia's economy and its war effort. For the other participants, it's a chance to amplify their voices and narratives. The beauty of BRICS is that it doesn't put too many obligations on you, says Alexander Gabiev, director of the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center. There are not that many strings attached, really, to being part of BRICS. And at the same time, there might be interesting opportunities coming your way, including just having more face time with all of these leaders. For Putin, the summit is important personally because it shows the failure of Western efforts to isolate him, Gabiev says. The gathering will demonstrate at home and abroad that Russia is really an important player that is leading this new group that will end the Western dominance, that's his personal narrative, he says. The Kremlin will be able to talk to major players like India and China about expanding trade and bypassing Western sanctions. India is an important market for Russian commodities, while China is where Moscow hopes to get its hands on dual use and various military-related goods, Gabiev says. Russia also wants more countries participating in a payment system project that would be an alternative to the global bank messaging network SWIFT, allowing Moscow to trade with its partners without worrying about sanctions. The Russian idea is that if you create a platform where there is China, Russia, India and Brazil and Saudi Arabia, many countries that are vital partners for the US, the US will not be ready to go after this platform and sanction it, Gabiev said. Russia also is expected to sign a comprehensive strategic partnership treaty with Iran, bolstering the increasingly close ties between Moscow and Tehran. After the fighting in Ukraine began in 2022, Iran provided Moscow with hundreds of drones and helped launch their production in Russia. The Iranian drone deliveries, which Moscow and Tehran have denied, have allowed for a constant barrage of long-range drone strikes at Ukraine's infrastructure. Iran, in turn, wants sophisticated Russian weapons, like long-range air defense systems and fighter jets to help fend off a possible attack by Israel. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov refused to comment when asked whether the treaty will include mutual military assistance. For China, BRICS is among several international organizations along with the security-focused Shanghai Cooperation Organization through which it seeks to promote an alternative to the US-led world order. The beauty of BRICS is that it doesn't put you put too many obligations on you, right? There are not that many strings attached really for being part of the BRICS. And at the same time, there might be interesting opportunities coming your way, including just having more face time with all of these leaders. The Russian idea is that if you create a platform on which there is not only China and Russia, India and Brazil and Saudi Arabia, many countries that are vital partners for the US, US will not be ready to go after this platform and sanction it. So Russia will have a lot of breathing space. And I think that the West is working behind the closed doors also with these countries trying to discourage them from deeper integration.
BRICS is the, is the voice of the Global South, uh, global south in these multilateral platforms um, where the West dominate. Really, BRICS can take us out of that. And it's the only formation, if you look at the G20s, whatever, you can name them, African Union, you can name them. No other platform or association can take out, um, can rescue the Global South from the current global order. It's only the BRICS with a powerful voice and um, collaboration. So the two other players in this expanded grouping uh, who are kind of more wanting to shape um, or stay in the non-aligned aspect, they don't want to feel like they're being gravitational pull of China into a block, that would be India and Brazil. So how they manage to navigate that will remain to be seen.